I'm David Wheaton. I attended Stanford University in 1987-88 and was inducted into the ITA Collegiate Tennis Hall of Fame in 2012. So we're going back in history here to my, my tennis playing days, but uh, glad to join you today. I still live in Minnesota. I was born, raised, and still reside here, married. I have a, uh, a ten, or almost 11-year-old son who's finishing his fourth grade year, so I uh, consider myself very blessed. When I grew up, my parents and my family emphasized playing or going to college and growing up in a tennis playing family, that was always a goal. And I had seen my older siblings play at the University of Minnesota. Uh, my sister Marnie was a really good player. As a matter of fact, I think she's, I know she does, still holds the um, the record there for most wins of any of any female college player at the university. So she was a very accomplished player. Um, my brother Mark and John both played there. As a matter of fact, my mother, my my brother Mark, uh, won uh, the Big Ten title. I think it was the first time the University of Minnesota had ever done that when he was there. So I grew up watching this, and that that inspired me. And I was the youngest in in our family by a long shot. And so I had these older siblings that really helped me a lot when I got started in tennis. And so always my goal coming through was to, to, to play pro tennis. Yes, I had that dream when I was young, but I always thought part of that journey would be going to college. As I got into my late teenage years, I was doing well in the, the junior tennis world and some of my peers were turning pro directly out of juniors. And that was a, that, that was a consideration for me. But I don't think a strong consideration because, again, it goes back to the the idea that I would always, my parents emphasized going to college, and even though I just went for one year, um, that was uh, that was sort of the the objective all along. And Coach Gould at Stanford uh, had been, you know, in touch with me for a time before I came to college. Of course, there are other universities as well. It was difficult actually to turn down uh, going to the University of Minnesota where I'm from and where my siblings had gone. I was very close with the, uh, the coach there named Jerry Noyce. And um, so, but in the end, it worked out well for me to go to Stanford and it was really a great memory and great time in my life. There are a few things that really stick out. I mean, I, I could just say we won the NCAA title that year in Athens, Georgia, that was in 1988, which was, of course, really exciting um, I'd always heard about Athens and the energy there and playing in the, in the NCAA tournament and we were on the ropes against USC in the semis and, and won that match and then won the title against LSU in the final. So that would be sort of the, the big highlight. But I think if you go maybe behind the scenes a little bit, there are a couple other things that really stick out in my mind. Just sort of the daily practices and camaraderie. Uh, with Coach Gould and, and the rest of the team at Stanford and how he really, in a measured way, prepared us to peak for the NCAA tournament. You know, going back to the very beginning of the year, he would he would play songs about Georgia over the loudspeakers at, on, at the practice facility at Stanford to get our minds uh, conditioned towards where, what we were trying to do. So those daily practices and the camaraderie were just very memorable. I think it's difficult to even quantify or communicate uh, how much tennis and then college tennis experience, when you add in the educational side of it, which is major, we're talking mainly about tennis here, but obviously when you're in college, you're there and taking classes and all that. So you combine the, the educational aspect of it with, with the tennis. And there are just so many ways um, you know, just from a team standpoint, just realizing that each member of a team or an organization is part of the whole and important. Um, you know, some teammates, team members may get higher um, notoriety, uh, but all members of a team are important and in, in, in do a specific task that's important. And that's, that, that's something you take out of college tennis into the, the regular business world or whatever kind of career. Um, I think another big one is just the daily discipline, the daily repetitive practice of trying to improve and to get yourself better, uh, to learning how to do time management, uh, trusting your coaches. Um, those are things that I think just completely translate over into any kind of career you go into after tennis. 
And as I look back at my, my time when I was in college, 18, 19 years old, I just look back and just think, boy, I had a long way to go to maturity. Um, you know, I just uh, was young and making not great decisions, to be totally honest. And I'm thankful for some of the people in my life then that were at least trying to get me go to go the right direction. It took more time, but those are some of the lessons that I needed to learn then and that are transferable to, you know, I think, my life today. I think after playing the NCAA tournament, I realized that I think another year of college tennis could have done me well, but I also realized that that was my next goal uh, beyond college was to play in the professional tour. Now I was 19 years old. And that was really a big decision because even though I had done really well in college and in juniors and so forth, there's no guarantee when you start heading out on the, on the professional tour and there's no kind of going back. Yes, you can go back to college as a, as a student, but uh, I was foregoing going back as a tennis player once you turn professional. So that was a big step. And uh, you're, you're kind of jumping into the deep end of the pool. And uh, thankfully, after about a year on the tour, I was able to work my way up where I could start earning a living uh, on the pro tour. So that, that was good. But that was a, a tenuous time making that decision. And it was a tough decision. Uh, but looking back, um, I think it was the right decision. But uh, I, I really certainly did enjoy uh, that year I played at Stanford. A lot of different factors that, that went into thinking, just realizing that, you know, that this is the time where I need to start thinking about the rest of my life. And that was difficult, by the way, because I've been playing tennis since I was four or five years old and really never known any different kind of life uh, beyond tennis. And so this is another sort of stepping into the deep end of the pool moment. Like, what do I do now? I, I didn't really want to go back on the tour to be a coach. I didn't want to be traveling all over the world. I've always been sort of a Minnesota boy and a family guy, and I've been gone for so many years. I wanted to be home. Uh, you know, for the next stage of my life. And so what, I, what, what was I gonna do? And that shortly come, after coming off the tour, I got involved in radio as a radio host. And I didn't see that coming. That wasn't my goal. Uh, in some ways it was just placed in my lap. I was, I was a guest on a local sports program in Minnesota. And a couple weeks after being a guest on that program, the man who was hosting it said he wanted to get into a different career and how would I like to take over his radio program? And that was really the beginning of it. I started writing about the same time for the Minneapolis Star Tribune, and that started to lead to me getting involved in, in writing books um, and speaking and so forth. And so radio and writing and speaking has been really uh, my career trajectory after, after tennis. And so one sort of led into another, and I think the tennis background also kind of led to me doing the things I do. It was sort of a natural transition, even though I never saw that coming. It, me it means a lot um, when you get recognized in that way. Um, I, I think what, what means a lot is just, just the history of college tennis and the, the list of others who are part of the Hall of Fame. And, you know, to be considered uh, a part of that group is 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 humbling in a way. Uh, it wasn't a goal of mine to be in the College Hall of Fame someday, but it's certainly an honor that's humbling. And uh, I'm very grateful for the recognition for that. And, um, you know, reliving some of those memories with you today uh, is special because we're, I'm a lot of years away from that now. Um, but I know that was a key part of my life. And so getting inducted down, I think it was at Athens too, where they did the induction. And so that was very special going back there. My uh, Dick Gould was there. Uh, my coach growing up from Minnesota, Jerry Noyce came down for it. So my wife was there to see it. Uh, and so that was um, just a very special honor that something that, um, you know, I have in the back of my mind, that's something that I've, I've definitely cherished over the years.